Now y'all know, when we do questions from subscribers, we have a lot of fun with it because y'all always bring out so many different great points and perspectives, stuff that I wasn't thinking about, stuff that a lot of other people weren't thinking about, and we just have a really good time. But for this episode of Questions from Subs, I couldn't just keep the good time all to myself. I had to share it out. And bringing on the fellas from Lunch Break Hot Take was so nice that I had to do it twice. So they'll be joining me to help break some of these questions down, help answer some of these questions so you can hear their point of view and their perspective on how they feel about you guys' questions. Now, what question from subscribers is, of course, is a series where you can ask any NFL question you want to, and we answer it in a video like this. Now, for the Team Keep It Clean patrons, the patrons, if you want to send a question, you want to participate in this, you can send your question directly on Patreon. And for anybody that wants to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenfits. I love y'all. And if you don't want to do that, which is fine, you already know. If you want to participate in questions from subs, you can send an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Y'all, we have some fire questions as always. We have some thought-provoking questions as always. So as always, let's do it. Yeah, this feels like a dream. My first question came from Stephanie. She said, hello, Engraven. Uh, I hope you and your family are well. Yesterday was my birthday and I spent the day relaxing and this question occurred to me about the Ravens. You've mentioned several times that the organization has a bad reputation with wide receivers. I wonder if you could be a little bit more specific with that. But my real question is, why do you believe that Eric DaCosta won't try again for a veteran wide receiver? Uh, is it once burnt, twice shy? Or is it that he just doesn't believe any of those in the draft uh, for this year, they could have helped the team. Uh, you may have covered this already, and if so, my apologies, but what would it take for the Ravens to sign a veteran wide receiver and for them to change their bad reputation? The fact is, Lamar Jackson wants to go all the way. The fans want it. I assume the organization wants it as well. So why does it feel like there is a disconnect in communication between the quarterback and the organization when it comes to this topic? It especially felt like that on the draft night with Hollywood. Anyway, sorry for the long letter. Blessings to you and the fam and to all the team. Keep it clean. So how can Ravens change this whole idea of a wide receiver for them? Uh, the idea that wide receivers won't eat here, wide receivers won't feast with the Ravens, wide receivers won't get the numbers like that. How can the Ravens change that? Well, first, I want to say that uh, I think the, the problem is that we do go veteran too much. In fact, we, we go too veteran, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> I think what she means by veteran wide receivers is somebody that's still in their prime, um, you know, a, one of the top tier wide receivers. But we tend to go with guys that are a little over the hill that won't cost a whole lot. And, um, you know, we keep on trying to uh, get it done with with our guys. But we also don't usually make a, a, a big investment in our guys either. Um, you know, EDC has, has gone uh, wide receiver in the first round twice. You know, um, that's something we haven't normally done in the past. But, you know, as you see, it just – you know, Hollywood just got shipped out. You know, it, it wasn't it wasn't enough. And we'll see what Rashad Bateman. Uh, what needs to happen is one, Rashad Bateman needs to uh, turn into the player that we all think he'll, he'll turn into. Um, and two, it just needs to be a change in the scheme. Ultimately, uh, mm -hmm. we are known as a run first, run heavy team. Um, you know, Hollywood leaving and saying that you know he wasn't a good scheme fit um, while still on his rookie contract uh, does not help our image. You know, um, and then we'll see if we can land another big time wide receiver in here. But if if not, um, I don't see how how that image uh, gets fixed this year anyway. Okay, first off, say uh, happy birthday to uh, Stephanie. Yes, happy uh, birthday, Stephanie. I want to. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep it short. It's uh, John Harbaugh's got to go, and you got to start paying people. Mm. There you go. If you don't ever think that players are worth it, you don't want to pay them. They're not going to want to come. Next question came from my guy, Marco. He said, engraver, my man, hope everything is great with you and the family. I think the answer to our middle linebacker position is already on our roster. Chuck Clark. He already wears the green dot, calls out defensive signals, and has a high football IQ. Plus, Hamilton and Marcus Williams will play the two safety positions, so Chuck uh, can make the transition. 
Uh, what do you think? Ravens like projects and converting players to different positions. Do you think they should do this? And will they do this piece? What do you think, B? I'm going to say no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, look, the the part of the uh, the transition for players, they have to want to do it. Like, Chuck yeah, Clark yeah. wants to go somewhere else and play safety. I don't think he wants to be in there banging around with 300 pounders all game, <laughs> every game. <laughs> and trying to come up and make those tackles. I think Chuck will, uh, he'll peace out on that. Yeah, I think this is probably Chuck Clark's uh, best year this past year. I thought he played really, really well. I think he wants to continue uh, playing at that safety position. Um, I, I, I'm not sure which position plays pays more. I would say probably safety. He, he wants. I'm pretty sure he wants to continue to try to thrive there. And the Ravens don't see him as a long term answer, which it doesn't seem like it does because he's drafted Kyle Hamilton. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would expect him to be uh, going elsewhere, not not changing positions. Not even this year, I wouldn't change positions. Next question came from my guy Gareth. He said, "Dang Graven, I've been thinking that we are going back to three tight end sets again, like we did in 2019. Uh, it seems that way. Uh, and P.S. I have uh, I haven't texted you in a minute. Uh, just to, to say that you got me through a really hard couple of months. Uh, my grandmother passed away. Um, you don't know how you impact people's lives." Uh, you're one of one. Keep up the great work and tell team keep it clean that we will get through the Hollywood trade. Uh, love you, bro, and hope everything and everyone is okay. Hey, uh, I appreciate that, and, and sorry to hear about uh, your, your your grandma, man. Yeah, condolences. That, yeah, man, because that's always tough um, to 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 lose somebody, man. Sorry about that, man. Yeah. Um, as far as uh, the three tight end sets, um, yeah, I mean that's that's what it's looking like. You have. Three tight ends on the roster, really two for sure. Well, I can't even say for sure. Mark Andrews for sure. You also have Nick Boyle, uh, and then you got Josh Oliver. Kind of, we'll see what happens with him. But then you draft two tight ends in um, in Kala and Likely. Uh, so yeah, you you best believe them three tight end sets are on the way. Um, so that that's what it's looking like now. As far as um, yeah, going back to 2019, uh, I. I hope they have the success on offense, but the season doesn't end the same way uh, that it did back in 2019. And that's because the quality or the lack of quality that they had at wide receiver. Uh, So it came and really bit them in the butt at the worst possible time. Um, And it was, I think it was the, the, the lack of wide receiver and the lack of adjustments too, Uh, because playoffs that's, that's when everything counts the most Uh, and Ravens clearly did not, get it done but how y'all feel about possibly going back to the 2019 style i mean it seems like that's what they're trying to do and even Mm -hmm. with that no matter what you're trying to do my issue is why aren't you trying to get the best players possible to um fit what you're trying to do if you want to do a heavy three tight end set why aren't you trying to get the best tight ends possible right we you know we talked about trading for zach Ertz uh, a year ago and that never fell through i thought maybe we try to get him in the offseason we didn't do that but you're relying on um, obviously Mark Andrews is one of the best tight ends in the league. Some mm-hmm. argue he's the best, uh, but Nick Boyle, I mean, he, I mean, one of the he's not that guy. guy. You know, good, good blocker. You know, like he's not somebody you're relying on in the pass game. And then you know we got two fourth round rookies that we're just factoring in. One, you know, some people are talking about converting him to a wide receiver. Um, got to do better than that if, you, if you're talking about running out with three tight end sets like try to try to upgrade that position a little bit yeah stop looking for answers you know outside like you don't don't go and and try to look up a history fact in your math textbook right like if you want a wide receiver go get a wide receiver don't draft a tight end and say well maybe he could play there don't talk oh. don't look at miles boykin and say hey maybe we can move him to tight end no go get a tight end if you want a wide receiver go get a wide receiver i don't like uh it doesn't. It doesn't uh, give me much confidence when you see a team looking into the past to try to fix their current and future problems. Mm. I think that's a sign that you need a change in leadership. Uh, but you know, <laughs> especially when they said we needed to be exactly like 2019, get the one decent receiver up out of here. Uh, <laughs> so I'm not. I'm not real confident yeah. in that approach. But it seems like that's the way they're going. So we'll see. Next question came from my guy, Mark 2K6. He said, after watching the Hollywood Brown post trade on I Am Athlete interview, uh, how confident are you in the Ravens coaching staff when it comes to the passing game? P.S. I love the Ravens, but I am not a fan of John Harbaugh or Greg Roman. Mm. 
You want to start? Being, I've heard it sounds like Bart needs to be subscribed. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. You want to go ahead? No, you go ahead. You go ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah. No. So, I mean, I, I I agree. I I didn't see that particular interview. I mean, to say that uh, up front there, but no, I'm not confident at all in the Ravens coaching staff. Uh, I don't think that they develop players well. I don't think they use players to the best of their ability. They obviously don't listen to players who have an issue with uh, the way the team's being run, as you see with Hollywood saying, hey, you know, I don't want to be in a, a, this kind of scheme. The scheme doesn't work for me. Uh, and they said, too bad, basically, right? Um, so, no, I, I have about zero confidence in, in John Harbaugh and crew. Uh, I think that once Harbaugh won the Super Bowl, he just said, I'm going to do it my way. You can't tell me otherwise. And it doesn't matter if it works or not. Yeah. Um, and, and it's not about whether we believe in the system. It's about whether the players believe in the system. And to B's point, it doesn't seem like they're buying in, or at least we know some of them aren't. Hollywood didn't buy in. Des Bryant has mm-hmm. spoke out about it. Oh, yeah. Uh, Willie, Sneed even, too. Willie Sneed, even David Cully spoke out about it oh, after yeah. he left. Yeah. So even some, you know, you have, your own coaching staff that's saying uh, this this ain't it. So I mean, you know, like you can't be that stubborn to where all the signs are telling you you got to make a make a change here, and you just saying mm-hmm. no, I'm gonna go with my guys. All right? That's right. not that's not a good look. Nobody who's been involved in the passing game believes in the passing game except for Greg Roman. All right. Mm. Wow. And and what's crazy about that with Hollywood? Something that he spoke on um, in his interview. He said he he's not only he wasn't only speaking for him. He said he spoke up for other guys too, um, but he said then when when he spoke up for both him and other guys, then that's when he was the the picture was painted that he was like selfish or something like that. Yeah. So that's when he said he decided that he wasn't gonna speak up about it anymore. So yeah. that's very uh, telling and, and very kind of scary to think about. I do want to say too, we we've been very critical of Hollywood. You know, he's had his issues with drops and and kind of disappeared. You know, especially the last half of of last season. But it does take a, a, a good amount of, of courage to kind of step up and, and put yourself out there and mm-hmm. say the things that he says. And, you know, I think it's important. I mean, you know, it's not, it's not life or death or anything. We're just talking about football. But it's a, it's it's an important thing to, that he's stepping up and kind of being that leader for, you know, all the people on the team who had an issue. Um, and I think that, you know, I think he's going to thrive in Arizona much more than he did in Baltimore. Uh, so, you know, yeah. I really wish him the best. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. All right, last question came from my guy, DeRaven. He said, hope all is well on this post-draft Sunday. We had a great draft, and I'm happy with the group we got. However, watching your newest question from subs has me wondering, is Lamar holding off on the contract because he still wants to be a quarterback? No disrespect intended, but Giro has so many design QB runs, and Lamar just wants to throw the ball and only run when necessary. Is Giro and the Ravens holding Lamar back from being a great passer? I mean, if the Ravens don't free him up, someone else sure will. Lamar does, doesn't want to continue to be RG3 or Vic-like. He wants to be a proven passer. If that's true, does the Brown trade put a bigger dent in the system, especially if we don't sign a big-name receiver? I believe it does. I believe Lamar is thinking that this means the Ravens still don't trust his arm. So there's, a, there's little trust in big trust. Uh, you can say they opened it up in 2021, but that was only because of injuries. If injuries don't happen, then neither does the air attack. Hmm, that's something that I've been thinking about a lot myself. Uh, he said, we want to build an indefensible offense, but where's our big body wide receiver for this? Andrews, likely Kyler, uh, will likely be switched to wide receiver. Oh, he's just talking about that. Will likely be switched to wide receiver um, or be used in wide receiver roles like Andrews, like they wanted to do with Max Williams. Hurst and Andrews. Lastly, we remember the price offered to Lamar was quote unquote a generational price tag. I bet that doesn't seem too generational anymore with all the prices skyrocketing. Just had that on my mind. Anyways, have a wonderful evening. Ooh, that was loaded. Um, yes, um, G Row and company are holding Lamar back from being a you know a a, a big time passer. And to B's credit, B's been saying it for a while. He doesn't believe that um, that they believe in Lamar as a passer. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think that Lamar is he he can see past the present and look long term. Long term, G is not going to be there. John Harbaugh probably won't be there either. If we're being honest, um, I think he does want to stay in Baltimore. Um, and I think they will get a deal done. I think the move that he's doing right now is just to make sure he gets the most money he can possibly make. Just by him waiting, you know, his price tag went from 
possibly 35 million to definitely at least 45 million i'm thinking 50 55 if i'm being honest mm-hmm. right um so just waiting being patient is is making him more money i think that's a business move and the reason why i think he's going to stay ultimately is because steve bashadi is not going to let his cash cow walk out the door right i mean he he runs the city <laughs> lamar <laughs> runs the city people people go to see lamar jackson he puts butts in the seats mm-hmm. and i think it was the same thing with Flacco. You know, people love Flacco after he won a Super Bowl. I, I'm not 100 percent sure that Ozzy wanted to bring him back because you know that was that wouldn't have been the first time that uh we let a quarterback go after winning a Super Bowl. Shout out to Trent Dilfer, yeah. right? Um, and I think Ozzy was prepared to let Flacco go. And I think Steve Bashai stepped in and said, No, uh, pay the man. I don't care what he's asking for, pay him. I think the same thing's gonna happen with Lamar Jackson when it comes down to it. He says, I don't care what he's asking for, give him the money. Yeah. And once that happens then you're going to start seeing a shakeup, right? Then Lamar can say, not really feeling this system anymore. Okay, well, we're invested in you. We're not invested in Greg Roman or really Harbaugh. So I think after the contract, uh, his new contract is signed, then I, I, I think we'll see a change in, in philosophy and, and, and leadership. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I tend to agree. Like Jose said, I, I said as soon as they retain Greg Roman, that's a signal that they don't think that Lamar is a, a, a franchise quarterback in terms of passing the ball. Like they don't believe in him. They're not putting him in that kind of an offense because they just don't think he can do it. Um, but, you know, as we've said, you know, multiple times we think that they do need a, a change in, in philosophy, a change in leadership there. And it's not just Lamar, but, you know, I think that Ravens fans had to kind of look at the organization and see, you know, it's not all okay right now, right? Uh, it's a talented team, you know, and, and yeah, they got a lot of talented players in the draft, but your number one receiver forced his way out uh, because he's unhappy with the coach. Your quarterback won't talk to your front office right now. That's not an, that's not an okay thing. Uh, they have to be, you know, in lockstep, right? The, you want the, the GM, the coach, and the quarterback to all be on the same page, and they're not anywhere near that right now. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, Lamar, like Jose said, I think, yeah, it's it's partially money. I think also it is kind of trying to hold them accountable. Um, if, you know, they don't make the moves that he thinks that they should make, he doesn't need to sign a long-term deal. You know, he can play on that fifth-year option. Then he can play on the franchise tag. Then he can play on the franchise tag again, and Baltimore can just deal with it, uh, deal with the cap implications of that. And once you know those three years go by, he'll hit free agency as probably the uh, the most coveted free agent in the history of football. And at that point, he he'll, you know either Baltimore's done enough to convince him that hey, we do believe in you as a passer. We'll bring you back. We're going to try and win, or he'll go somewhere else. And even, you know, it could be also that it doesn't even get that far. It could be, hey, you know, he does a Hollywood and says, you know what, uh, Harbaugh and, and and Greg Roman aren't really uh, meshing with me, and it's time for me to go. Oof. That would be crazy. Yeah. I want to be clear. I don't think that that is going to happen. I think Lamar's going to be a Raven for life, but, you know, it's 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 one of the possibilities. Like, he's not, he's not, uh, you know, like I said, he's not engaging with DaCosta on the contract right now. So it's not all okay. Right. Shout out to Graven.